Welcome to the premiere of my new play, Ivan the Sixth, a serious drama set in Russia in 1764. Tsar Ivan the Sixth, Antonovich Ulrich Wolfenbüttel of Russia, son of Prince Anthony Ulrich of Brunswick and Lunenburg, and Grand Duchess Anna Leopoldovna, the daughter of Ivan V, was crowned at the age of two months, deposed at fifteen months, and thrown into solitary confinement until he was twenty-four. It is in his memory, and in memory of all such children who are abandoned and alone, that this play was written. Ivan VI is intended for the stage or screen. It is physical and violent. What you're going to see is only the first step toward a full production. I didn't feel there's much of a point in trying to make it look like the actors are actually fighting when everyone watching knows they can't be. It's the narrative that counts. We want to introduce Ivan and his story to the world. So we concentrated on that. Everyone simply dressed, minimal props, and I have to say, more emotional depth and intelligence in interpreting the dialogue than any playwright has a right to expect. So, please help us move Ivan VI down the road. Information on that is available at the end of the video. In the meantime, I give you Ivan VI, the baby czar of Russia. Ivan VI, the czar of Russia, crowned at two months, dethroned at 15 months, he reigned for just over a year before being thrown into prison where he has lived in solitary confinement ever since. He is 24 years old. As the curtain rises, it's early evening. Ivan is masturbating. As he reaches his climax, the cell door opens abruptly and Lieutenant Chekin enters, carrying Ivan's evening meal in a small bowl. At it again, you son of a whore. He's defiling himself again, Captain. With his hands down his pants. You're going straight to hell, nitwit. Captain Vlasov enters, crosses directly to Ivan, who is still in the throes of his orgasm, grabs him by his shirt, and throws him to the floor. Damn it, boys. Stop that. How many times have I warned you about this? I can't stop. Oh, please. Please, please. If you don't stop, you're gonna burn forever. Forever and forever. Say something, moron. Tell God you're sorry. Say, I'm a sinner, God. Save my miserable soul from hell, God. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. God, save my miserable soul from hell, God. Say it again. I'm 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 a sinner. Uh, God, save my miserable soul from hell. God he doesn't know what he's saying. He's an idiot. You think he knows what hell is? Do you know what hell is, boy? The, the priest said it was hot. And what is hot? I I I. I do, don't know. Hot. <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. That's soon enough for me. When was his last confession? And Father Maxine won't come. Says the boy has nothing to confess. Even the church has lost interest. Just what I need. Now I'm responsible for his soul, too. You hear that, you little pervert? <laughs> Who is it has to save your dirty little soul? You, sir? You have to, to do it? No, I don't. You have to do it, don't. I just have to make you do it. P please, sir, P please. I'm sorry, so sorry. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Sir? And why, oh, why I'm talking about it. He is too dim to appreciate my efforts on his behalf. But it doesn't matter who he thinks he is. There are consequences flying. There are rumors all over the prison. Oh, ignore them. Look at him. Do you think that could be God's anointed? It's not for me to say, sir. No, it's not. It's not your business at all. The guards exit. Ivan screams, runs to the door, and hammers on it with his fist. <laughs> You can't do this to me! I'll cut off your heads! 
I'm the sovereign of Russia! You can't treat me like this! You can't! You can't! You can't! Finally, Ivan exhausts himself and slides down the door into a panting heap as the ghostly figure of Elizabeth II appears for the first time. Well, boy, you're hardly acting like a czar. I am the czar. Elizabeth picks up Ivan's breakfast bowl and sniffs delicately. Oh, cold turnips and something. <laughs> we would take their heads from this. Ivan grabs the bowl and begins eating with his fingers. Why do they do that? They won't let me do anything. Even a czar must use some discretion. You do that, that thing with your hand a lot. I don't know why. It just feels good. I need it. Yes, yes, all of you say that. Men are pigs. Your needs provide an excuse for everything. Count Alexis Razumovsky, Elizabeth's lover, appears for the first time. Don't be so hard on the boy, my dear. He has a point. He will take your side. You're no better than he is. All of us go through something like that for a while. The priest screams, but who cares? They wear dresses. <laughs> Shouldn't he be done with it by now? He has nothing else to do, Elizabeth, not even a book. Didn't they give him a Bible? Our order allowed for a Bible. I doubt the epistles of St. Paul made much of an impression. For that, one must be able to read. He was to have been taught the alphabet. Reciting A, B, C is just the thing to keep a boy's hands out of his pants. <laughs> well, at least you moved on. I had options. Thank God. I haven't heard any complaints. Certainly no one calls me a miserable sinner. <laughs> Which you certainly are. But you sin with so much charm. They kiss. Stop that! Or I'm going to tell my mother to cut off your heads. I doubt that, Ivan Nushka. We are Elizabeth Petrovna. And your mother is nothing but an unrepentant slut. And you're nothing but my cousin. At the moment, but an important cousin, nonetheless. Do you know what a Tsar is, Your Majesty? Well, it's... 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 Don't count. He wasn't old enough when he fell to have any idea about it. No, I hate this. I hated it when we did it. Nonetheless, we did do it. I know who I am. And I can do what I want, and if you... Check and throws open the door and enters. Elizabeth and Alexis, who only exist in Ivan's mind, vanish as he falls to the floor and grovels. All right, idiot. Where's your piss pot? I, I, I don't know where, where, where it is. What do you do? Pee on the walls? I do, don't know. It's in the, the, the corner. Crawl over and get it, pig. Shekin shoves Ivan with his foot. Please, stop. Please. Ivan trembles as he picks up an old bucket and holds it up to Shekin. Moron. The sooner you're gone, the better. He spits on Ivan and storms out of the cell. Ivan lays there whimpering as Elizabeth and Alexis reappear. Why is being a czar so hard? Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown, Ivanushka. A quote from an obscure 16th century poet. It does make one think. It hurts. Yes, it surely does. I really don't know why anyone would want it. I don't want it. I want to go home. We didn't want it either. That's why you got it. It would have been kinder if you decided sooner. You had an ample opportunity to take the wretched throne before the poor child was born. Anna Petrovna wanted to rule, and civil war is expensive. Besides, she was my older sister, and we were otherwise 
occupied with you, as I recall. Don't you think throwing a little boy into prison was a bit extreme? His mother threatened to send us to a convent. Did we have a choice? He was 15 months old, my love, crowned, anointed, and deified, the grandson of Ivan V. Hardly illegitimate. You let him reign for scarcely a year. We waited long enough, Alexis. You certainly didn't suffer from it. Besides, Anna Leopoldovna was impossible, and we were the only legitimate candidate. She was not impossible. She was my mother. Yes, well, that was a mistake. Anna was not very nice, Ivan Antonovich. You're better off without her. You're certainly better off without her. <laughs> Remember who you are, Count Razumovsky. You are nothing but a pretty peasant when we raised you up. We can still have you whipped. Mm. Do you really want to scar this beautiful body, my dear? You've enjoyed it so much over the years. Well, we hardly have a choice, do we? The boy never met any of our other lovers, so you're all there is here in this place. He was two months old when he was crowned, Elizabeth. If you had taken the throne then, all this sordid imprisonment could have been avoided. Anna Petrovna named him heir about 20 minutes after her first stroke. Then she died. The child was proclaimed czar the next day, and everyone in sight was pledging eternal allegiance. There was hardly time to plan. What are you talking about? Does he know you took it from him? He didn't the last time he saw us. And unless the guards and priests have been lying, he's been told nothing since he was four. What are you talking about? Why are those men so mean? They never leave me alone. They want you dead, Ivan. They're looking for an excuse to kill you. Elizabeth? Well, they are. As long as he's alive, they can't leave the prison. What are you talking about? What does dead mean? You've wanted him dead for 20 years since you condemned him to this dreadful place. What is dead? He was a baby, Elizabeth. Hardly a threat. His mother was a threat. We had no choice. What is dead? Good God, boy, don't you know anything? We thought educating him might be inconvenient. Mm, to say the least. An anointed czar running around loose was not in our interest, particularly an educated czar. There hasn't been a moment since we took power that someone or other hasn't threatened to put him back on the throne. If he could read and write, well... This way, he's a dead issue. Basically. If I'm dead, can I go home? In a manner of speaking, Ivanushka, yes. Some people think that's what dead is. Don't be, Shazun, Alexis. We're dead, and this place is hardly home. Does the Archbishop know you think that? Anyway, whose fault is it? I didn't take him from his mother and throw him in prison. You certainly helped, you and the Priyabrzhinsky guard. If we had failed, you would have been beheaded long before you fell from our favor. And yet, here we are. Yes, here we are. I want to be dead. Oh, Ivanushka, see what you've done? I want to be dead so I can go home. Oh, my dear child. Oh, dear, dear child. You go away now. I'm tired. Leave me alone. I want to be dead and go home. Oh, my sweet, sweet child. We couldn't regret it more. But we're terribly afraid that's going to happen all too soon. As Ivan falls asleep, the lights dim, pause for a moment, then fade to black. <laughs> As scene two opens, Ivan is on the floor in front of the closet, who is seated on the rubble above the bed with his right boot propped up on the boy's leg. Ivan is licking the captain's boot clean and drying it with his hair. At least you're good for something, boy. Uh, thank you, sir, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't oh. say you could stop, you little pervert. 
I'm sorry, sir, sir, so sorry. Good morning, Captain. Did it have its hands in its pants again? Not this time. He was sleeping when I came in. Well, perhaps your words on self-abuse have borne fruit. I doubt it. He doesn't know why. What he's doing is a sin. As I recall, the priests don't explain it particularly well. Don't do that, is all I remember. I see you're putting it to good use. Have some respect, Lieutenant. He's not an animal. I'm sorry, sir. I see you're putting His Majesty to good use. Your smart mouth is going to get you whipped. I, I am sorry, sir. I'll try to do better. I see you're putting prisoner number one to good use. What else is there to do in this godforsaken place? You speak to the governor? Hanin is no help. We're never going to get out of here. Catherine doesn't want the boy killed unless somebody makes a serious attempt to free him. She thinks we should encourage him to be a monk. <laughs> Good God, he can't even talk. Monks don't talk. They just mumble and rock back and forth. Hey, be careful, idiot. <sighs> drooling on my pants. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, so sorry. Well, how would that help? If he takes holy orders, he won't be eligible to the throne. So she can stop worrying about having to order the murder of a crown czar. Let me just starve him to death. Oh, no one is happy about this chicken. Least of all me. My God, he was, is the sovereign. Given his legitimacy and his gender, Elizabeth has no right to take his throne, and Catherine isn't even Russian. With all due respect, sir, so many have been put to death for saying less. Lazar sighs and gives Ivan his other foot. I've said that to no one but you. If you tell anyone, I'll deny it. Who do you think they'll believe, Lieutenant? Anyway, I'm not advocating Catherine be replaced. She'll make us rich if we last long enough. What does it matter? I'm never going to see my wife again. <clears throat> you hear that, you little bugger? Because of you, I can't fuck my wife. I'm so sorry, sir. Sir, so sorry. Please, please so sorry. Ivan attacks Blossom's boot as the captain leans back and studies him. Oh, uh, we have new orders. Sir? From now on, if you get sick, we don't call a doctor. We call a priest. Sir? Nor is he allowed to lie about his rank. If he does, he's to be punished severely. He is prisoner number one and nothing more. Seems extreme. It comes from very high up. Hanin won't even consider a reassignment? That we might have to execute him as a state secret. Only four people know about the order. But we want to keep it that way. Blaza stands and Ivan falls backward. Hear that, your majesty? We're stuck here till you're dead. I, I, I can't help it. I'm sorry. So sorry. Forgive me, sir. On the other hand, Benin is sending us each another thousand rubles. If we ever do go home, we'll be able to live the way he used to live. You remember that boy? The way you used to live? No, sir, no. I don't remember that, sir. I can't. I can't remember that. Maybe he'll just die of the plague. That would satisfy everyone. You coming, Chicken? One moment, sir. I'll be right there. Blasov exits as Chicken looks down at Ivan. Because of you, I can't see my wife, moron. Do you think that's fair? No, no, uh, no, uh, no. Get it out, uh, boy. Answer me. Do you think no, that's fair? No, sir. <laughs> No, 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 it isn't fair. No, not fair at all. You're going to find out, you little fucker. Check in. I need you. Coming, sir. <clears throat> Just you wait. Take care. I am a prince of the Empire. I am your sovereign. Crying, Ivan falls back against the bed. He lays there sobbing, then stuffs his hand into his pants. After a moment or two, Elizabeth and Alexis appear. Ivan ignores them, continuing to masturbate as they speak. I don't see how this can continue. He's a Romanov. He's the grand nephew of Peter the Great. He is a danger. He was dangerous for us. He's dangerous for Catherine. He's a human being. He didn't ask for this. He doesn't even know what's happening. You people are monsters when it comes to power. Why did you do this? 
Wasn't there any other choice? Another choice? An interesting question, Count. Another choice. You didn't object when you helped to dethrone him. You said you were going to send him back to Brunswick, not imprison him forever. Not reduce him to this, this sad, lonely infant. Well, he seems to be enjoying himself now. That is cruel and heartless. It's his only escape, and I doubt he even knows on what to focus. Has he ever seen a woman? Doesn't hair grow on your palms or Elizabeth. something? Elizabeth! You believe a priest told us that once. All right. All right. We surely didn't know he would come to this. You're lying, my love. Getting rid of him was the, an issue from the first moment. What did you think would happen? We washed our hands of him. After he was removed, he was Panin's concern. We had important things to deal with. You are flirting with Lazy Majesté, Count. Your threats are pointless, Elizabeth. We are figments of the boy's imagination and cannot change. We do not exist. As Ivan comes to orgasm, Alexis smiles and tenderly takes Elizabeth's hand. They embrace as they watch Ivan sink, exhausted to the floor. During the following conversation, Ivan gradually revives and begins to listen as Elizabeth and Alexis sit on the bed. Oh, Alexis, please. How could we have known what would come of him? He was the sovereign. We just thought... I just you thought... You thought, perhaps, that God actually protected his anointed? You said something like that once. Just leave it to God. Whenever he came to mind, we saw a little boy sitting on a toy throne. We never thought about him in prison, except when Panin insisted. Power is so thoughtless and selfish. You were a popular tsar, Elizabeth. Your people loved you, and sometimes I wondered why. Alexis! You discarded this boy without a thought. Then you brought in Peter and destroyed them. Peter was a mistake. The only intelligent thing he ever did was marry Catherine, and we made him do that. Another little boy, dear heart. You kidnapped him when he was 14. We needed an heir. Not that we hadn't tried for that. More than once, I should say. <laughs> Who was Peter? Another sad child ravaged by politics. I see you're back with us, sire. Do you feel better? We never feel better. Who was Peter? Ivan pushes himself up and sits between Elizabeth and Alexis. Peter the Third. he was our heir. Another six-month wonder. He didn't even last as long as you did. Did he have to lick boots? <laughs> Not once he came to power. Then he proved to be cruel and stupid. We doubt boot licking would have helped. Maybe. Who knows? Another German mistake. You should have left him in Kiel. He was our last male relative. With all the chaos after Ivanushka's removal. We needed an heir we could control. If Peter had stayed in Germany, he would have been a constant threat. Frederick was looking for any excuses. So we made him Grand Duke and kept him where he could be properly educated. Huh, another great success. It wasn't our fault he grew into an ignorant Cretan. All he cared about was playing with toy soldiers and that... that Voron Salva woman. Dreadful slut. If Catherine hadn't acted, he would have sent her to a convent and made Voron Sova empress. I doubt Sophie would have been a good nun. She would have overthrown God and annexed the Elysian fields. <laughs> oh, not exactly timid, was she? <laughs> she had no choice but to depose oh. Peter. He was an imbecile. Russia would not have survived. Mm, that captain was right. She isn't Russian after all. From what, what was the name of that place? Anhalt Zerbst. Anhalt Zerbst. My God, at best a minor aristocrat. <laughs> Says the pretty peasant. Anyway, Sophie vanished when she became Grand Duchess Catherine. That name suits her better. More Russian. Both you and that captain should be beaten severely. And yet, here we are. And Captain Voslav is hardly in danger, is he? 
We should have hung you before the coup. Orlov would never have sent that. Orlov was stupid. Imagine him a grand master of the hunt. He takes her in his arms as they swirl around the room. On the other hand, you loved me the last time Ivan saw you. So, you will love me as long as he exists. They kiss. Mm, we do seem to be in your power, Count. There were times you liked it. A change of pace is sometimes necessary. Still, we should have hung you. Why do you say you are Empress? Your Majesty. We are the Tsar. You cannot be Empress. No, child, we cannot. You never knew us as Empress. As Empress, we have now been dead for two years. After Peter was dealt with, Catherine took power. Will she let me go home? We're afraid that remains to be seen. He's back. He's coming back. Go. Please go, go. Alexis and Elizabeth exit. The door is stuck, Captain. God damn door. The door opens suddenly and Chekin, carrying Ivan's food bowl, stumbles into the room, falls over Ivan and spills food all over the floor. They wrestle for a moment, then come to rest with Chekin on top, looking directly into Ivan's face. What are you doing, you little cunt? You are a fucking pervert, aren't you? No, no, what, what is that? I don't know, get off, go, go, go away, go, go away. Vlasov enters. Luca, what are you doing? Get off that boy. I'm sorry, Captain, the little boy got in the way when I came in. You are an officer of the Empire. Act like one. Sorry, sir, an accident. Won't happen again, sir. Yes, well, make sure of that. In the meantime, we have news. Oh, it's good news, sir. Hardly. The Guriev brothers and Peter Khrushchev were arrested for trying to free his... his... Imperial Majesty. Just arrested? Yeah, for the moment. Of course, Catherine wants them hung. Apparently they got drunk during the coronation celebration and said a real czar should be restored to the throne. A real czar? God, the Empress must be livid. They were part of the cabal that enthroned her. After Orlov murdered Peter, Catherine rewarded him with 26,000 peasants, and Khrushchev was insanely jealous. Doesn't sound like living at court is ex exactly, uh, ever... Same? Hardly. Still, if they'd gotten a little further, we might have been able to get out of this place. Oh, I see. Not good news, then. Certainly not. Never any good news. Whatever, come with me. Lazo starts to step over Ivan, stumbles, and shoves the boy flat with his foot. Good God, boy! Chicken's right. You are such a pain in the ass. I'm not finished with you, moron. They exit. Free. Someone is trying to set us free. What is free, Count? Alexa studies Ivan as Elizabeth picks up the bowl and collects the spilled food. I don't want to tell him. It's an impossible concept. How can he ever understand? What is free? Is it a good thing? That depends. Elizabeth studies the food she picked up off the floor. If we didn't know better, we'd think they were trying to starve him to death. Do you like to eat this boy? Isn't this, isn't this what free people eat? Mm. Not if they want to live past ten. You're not helping. How can I help? It doesn't matter what I say. Those men would have killed him, and the Gruyers and Khrushchev would have come even close. What is free? God, you're a persistent little bugger. We are the sovereign little bugger, Count. And we will know what free is. Alexis pauses, then bows deeply. For once, he is speechless. Your Majesty, free is when one um, is not under the control of another. <laughs> and those men could not hurt us? No, sire. They could not. Then that's what we want. We want to be free. 
You may go. Your Majesty. As the shades vanish, Ivan falls back on the bed. This time, his masturbation is languid and relaxed. As the scene opens, the stage is still dark. The lights come up as Chekin quietly enters, carrying water in a cork glass. Ivan is asleep. Chekin closes the door and studies him. His arrogance and anger is in abeyance. For once, he seems almost sympathetic. Suddenly, Ivan awakes, sees Chekin above him, and panics. So sorry, so sorry. Please, don't. I'm not going to hit you, boy. Here. Chekin drops the flask on the bed. Surprised at first, Ivan pauses, then desperately grabs the flask and gulps down its contents, filling it down his face and body. Chekin doesn't speak again until Ivan stops to breathe. Yeah, drink like a pig. What's a, a, p- a pig? <laughs> That's what you are. Does a pig wear a crown? Some people think everyone who wears a crown is a pig. Do you? The army doesn't like political opinions. Blossom enters. Check it immediately changes his tone of voice. Pick that flask up, idiot. You're hitting the fart without making a mess. I'm sorry, sorry. Well, they got away with it. Sir? Khrushchev and the Gurayevs, they got away with it. Razumovsky somehow managed to convince the Empress they're too stupid to be anarchists. Whatever, they're already on their way to Siberia. I went there once. I saw Satan at the bottom of a frozen lake. Now they can blame Catherine for everything that ever happened. And just die. Yeah, with no one giving a fuck. Isn't that... sad? You're all fools. Otherwise, this matter would have been resolved by now and we could all go home. Yes. We'd see my family. How long has it been? Now, before we assigned this unpleasant task, it had been perhaps two years since then. Yes. Well, seems like forever. At any rate, there is other helpful news. There I say, glory be to God. <laughs> this time, God is directly involved. If he can stay awake long enough. Blossom and check and exit as the shades reappear. I doubt his hopeful news is hopeful for you. What is hopeful? Not to you, I'm afraid, your majesty. God, this is more than tiresome. Ivanushka, what do you remember? Do you remember Anna Leopoldovna? Mother was always busy. Mm, servicing the Saxon ambassador. <laughs> Do you really think that's necessary, Count? Oh, public knowledge, my dear. Who was that? Who, Your Majesty? The Saxon ambassador. That would be Count Leinar, a friend of your mother's. A very close friend. So close. She posted guards at her bedroom door, so he couldn't get out. She was very important. Yes, yes, we all know what she was. That aside, I'm sure that she loved you. I didn't see her much. Who did you see? I saw you. You were always nice. And I saw the Count. You were nice, too. Carried me to. to. to that other place. Riga? I guess. They didn't tell me. It was cold and I didn't get much to eat. Didn't your mother? She was busy. She was the regent, I told you. Yes, we know. You told us. Were other women kind to you other than us? Are you a woman? This is simply dreadful. Are you a woman? Yes, Ivan. I am. Was. A woman. You were nice. Sweet Ivanushka. We may not have been as nice as you remember. Not nearly. Shut up, Count! This is hard enough. There was another nice person. She fed me when I was hungry with one of these. Ivan reaches out and cups Elizabeth's breast. So 
You remember the wet nurse who fed you? Yes, if that's who she was. But no others. I... I... I don't think so. How did you feel when you touched us here, Ivan? Hungry. Oh dear, what can he be thinking of when he plays with himself? It might be you, it might be a horse. Little boys are extremely versatile when they masturbate. You can say the word, I won't tell. <laughs> he is not a little boy. He's 24 years old. And he's been deliberately denied information on procreation in case he might run amok and produce an heir. We are not amused. Neither are we, Your Grace. There is nothing amu amusing about any of it. Whatever. If I wanted to amuse you, I'd go about it an entirely different way. Or three, or six, or perhaps a dozen. Do you not love us at all? Which one of you? Oh, Alexis, really? Do you not love me at all? I always love you, even when you're wicked and cruel. We are not wicked and cruel. At least once, Empress, you were thoughtlessly wicked and extremely cruel. Voila! Not that it even matters now. We should have hung you. Tell me, Avinushka, can you remember anything else? It was warm and bright, not dark like this. There were lots of little things. Sparkly things with fire on the top. And lots of sweet things to eat. There was a funny man who played with me and made me laugh. And a man with a little box that made pretty sounds. They were so pretty. And it was nice when his friend picked me up. He swung me around and around and around. That made me laugh. I like to laugh. <laughs> I laughed when they put the heavy thing on my head. And people clapped. <laughs> Everything was so big. I, I could breathe better. And whenever I made a noise, they gave me things and told me I was a good boy. You are still a good boy, Ivan Antonovich. The captain says I'm a moron. The captain should be shot. Is a moron a good boy? A very good boy, dear heart. You are an exceptionally good boy. And afterwards, at Riga? I didn't like Riga. No one likes Riga. It was cold and dark. <laughs> Father said we would be going to... B B B B B B um... Rosewick. Your father's principality. Anthony Ulrich was a good man. He deserved better than your mother. He looked like the captain. He wore a coat with shiny buttons. It was very loud. He talked about B B Brunswick a lot, but we didn't go. No. Too bad you didn't go. Did you like your father, child? I didn't see him much. At Riga, I didn't see anybody much. And after that? I didn't see anybody. I've been here since then. Do the words wicked and cruel still mean nothing? We are already burning in hell for this Count Razumovsky. We've been in this cell one way or another since he has. Our punishment is going over this again and again, forever and ever, <sighs> ours and yours. Give me strength. <laughs> Bring vodka, chicken. A little drinking might be good for us. This could be happy news. Coming, sir. Right away. Come, Count. Your Majesty. The Shades exit. Blossom enters. He's in an excellent mood. He crosses and sits at the head of the bed. Ivan slips to the floor and cowers. Chicken, Bring something to eat while you're at it. Jekin enters carrying a small table holding a bottle of vodka, two large shot glasses, and a bowl of fruit. Here, sir. Out of you, sir. 
Lendish, you're an excellent orderly, check it. A great help in this desolate hole. Sometimes I don't miss my wife at all. Thank you, sir. But I'm sure you miss her for other reasons. <laughs> Not for much longer, I think. Sit, sit, sit. Thank you, Captain. Much appreciated. Shekin grabs a seat and sets across the table from Flossip. Ivan is on the floor. Apparently this is familiar and he looks hopeful. Flossip and Shekin basically ignore him as they down vodka shots throughout the following scene. By the end, both are quite drunk. May I pour you a drink, sir? Oh, I have news from Rostov. Sir? Matsevich is attacking the Empress. Who, sir? Arsene Matsevich, the Metropolitan of Rostov. Catherine is confiscating church assets and he's denouncing her for theft. Like something from an opera. He says it's because of secularization. They all lie. It's about money, of course. Is he important? Well, what planet are you living on, Lieutenant? He is more than important. He owns 16,000 peasants. Vlasov selects fruit from the bowl and tosses it to Ivan, who catches it in his mouth as often as he can. <laughs> yes, very I, important. I should say, he's a member of the Holy Synod, the first notable priest to question Catherine's authority. She canceled the personal meeting with him. How is this good news for us? When she snubbed him, he attacked her from his pulpit. The result being, she has summoned him to Moscow for trial. <laughs> Here, boy, you want this? Yes, please, sir. I'm always, I'm always hungry, sir. <laughs> God, Jackie, don't you feed this boy. Yes, sir. Every day at 4.30. Sir, he just wants to complain. That's what he does. Yes, well, it's rumored that Father Arsene considers the Empress illegitimate. If that's so, who do you think he'll be forced to support? Uh, well, I guess. Use your hand, Lieutenant. Who is the only living crown czar? Blossom throws another tidbit to Ivan, who is otherwise oblivious to their conversation. Christ, sir. It's him. He's the only one. His Imperial Majesty, Tsar Ivan the Sixth. They both freeze as Ivan abruptly sits up and addresses Blossom. You have something to say, Captain Vlasov? After a brief pause, Vlasov shoves Ivan with his foot, causing him to collapse on the floor. The gods are now clearly drunk. Mind your own business, pig! Vlasov throws a handful of fruit at the boy, who scampers about, putting pieces in his mouth. Slop is all you deserve. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. What if... Well... What if he is... The Tsar. Well, even if he is, there's no chance in hell this creature can return to power. He doesn't even know what power is. You know what that is, moron? Power? No, sir. No, 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 C -c Captain, sir. Well, shouldn't that settle us? <laughs> Metropolitan Matsevich Metropolitan Metropolitan is influential. An aristocrat, rich? What if he... Even if he mentions the boy's name, he's gonna be gone like that. That's why it's good for us. It will remind Catherine of this and her shaky claim to the throne. <laughs> Still. Uh, Arsene wants to help. Arsene <laughs> won't hesitate to say what he thinks. And I doubt Catherine will wait more than a minute or two to have him drawn and quartered. It might be enough to uh, make her finally decide about a inconvenient little prince. Blossom suddenly jumps to his feet, followed by Chekin, who hands him another drink. They are both drunk. Ivan becomes very still. Long life to the Empress! Now. To Empress Catherine! <laughs> now clean up this mess. Supper will be late tonight. Mirovich is just in from St. Petersburg. Tell the cook to use the Imperial service. Mirovich thinks he's important, and since he loses a cards, we want him to believe that for a while. Vlasov exits. Chekin unsteadily follows him to the door. When he reaches it, he pauses, then steps back and quietly swings it shut. He slowly turns to face Ivan, who is still on the floor, stage center. After a brief pause, 
Shekin walks straight toward Ivan, who scrambles out of the way. Shekin sits above the bed and gestures across the table. This. Go on, sis. S sir, I, I, I can. Of course you can. Stand up and sit. Why? Uh, Christ, boy, take a seat. You know how to do that, don't you? Sit in a chair? Y yes, yes, sir. No, stand up and sit. Ivan stands slowly, not taking his eyes off Chekin. He walks around the seat, studies it, and finally sits. See? That wasn't hard. Mm, no. Not hard. So, let's have a drink together. Like friends. Like... Mm, mm, friends? You know what friends are? You ever had a friend? A drink with a friend? Mm, no, I never had a friend. I can be your friend. Would you like that? If I was your friend? I don't know. Go on. Pick up the glass and we'll drink together. Like friends. Go on. It will make you feel better. Tentatively, Ivan picks up the shot glass. He looks at it as if it was poisonous. Go on. It's all right. To your health. Like this. Like a friend? Exactly like that. Like a friend. Say to your health first. That's how we salute one another. To your health. Ivan lifts his glass, looks at Chekin, and downs the shot. He reacts as might be expected. Oh. <coughs> oh. Yeah, there, it gets easier after a while. <coughs> I don't like it. Doesn't it make you feel hot right here? Oh. Uh, uh, warm. Yes. A little warm. It, uh, it does. Right here. Good boy. Here, we'll try again, then wait a little bit. I don't want you to feel uh, too good all at once. Thank you, friend. Of course. My pleasure. To your health. To your health. This time, Ivan reaches across the table and clinks the glasses himself. He takes a deep breath and they both down their shots. Ivan does better this time, breathing hard as he chokes a little and rubs his stomach. It is warm right down here. It's uh, it's better, but I still don't like it much. You can't tell the captain about this, you know. Between us, friends, you see. The captain isn't a friend? No, he's not. But you can count on me. Drink. You have to do three shots the first time. Uh, no, uh, I, I, I can't. Are we friends or not? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, I, I, I see. I, t t t t to your health. Ivan places the glass to his lips without ceremony this time and fumbles with it as he spills vodka all over himself. Check and rises, looming over him. I have a question. Have you thought about my wife? Uh, what? No, sir, do you have... Uh, please, please. Do you remember, moron? You apologized for keeping me from her. We agreed it wasn't fair. Deliberately, Chekin moves around the table toward Ivan. Ivan slips off the chair as best he can and cowers on the floor. He slowly backs away from Chekin. <laughs> Please, please, sir. I, I remember now. You're, yes, you're your wife. As Chekin forces Ivan toward the bed, the shades react, horrified at what they are seeing. It wasn't fair, was it? No, sir, no, no, no. Not fair. Not fair at all. No, 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 not fair at all. What are you going to do about it, idiot? I'm... I'm I'm so, so sorry, sir. P please, I, I don't, don't know. Not enough. Not enough at all. 
your majesty, not enough at all. Shekin is now a drunken monster. He advances on Ivan until they are at the center of the bed. It's back to the audience. But no, no, please, please, I'm sovereign. I, I am the czar. Shekin is seen from behind to be fumbling with his pants. After a moment, he falls forward on his knees and straddles Ivan. I am your friend! Shekin falls forward on Ivan's body. There's a brief pause. And the stage goes dark. As the lights come up, Ivan is draped across the bed sleeping. The table is gone. The room tidied up. A shaft of morning sunlight pools on the floor as Elizabeth and Alexis watch and worry over their young charge. He's quiet for the moment. Does that make you happy? We're what we'll always be. He is doomed. We don't know if that can apply. He was violated like an animal. Do animals do that? Surely not. It is a question of pleasure or power, not a need or some sort of mental construction. Animals are kinder, somehow oblivious. We are all animals, my pet. Watching any mother nursing a child, and that's clear. And yet he's sleeping, isn't he? Not angry, not complaining, not throwing a fit. Is he not entitled? He is the Tsar, imprisoned and abused with nothing at his disposal to improve his existence. God, I throw more fits than he does. He has for so little. He is a prince. He accepts his life as his duty. Because he has known nothing else, nor was it ever his duty to be raped. Although what's been done to him every day of his life is certainly that, rape. Your moral scruples have certainly ripened, Count. Did the relentless drinking and all those naked bodies finally become tedious? How unfair to remind me of that. For the young, nothing is tedious. If it was, an heir would have never been produced. Which you and I did not do. Which you did not do, my dear. My sons are healthy and well-placed. I tried my best to produce an heir for Russia, as you know. But it was not to be. Ivan is young. Ivan will always be young. The last time he saw us, he was our liege lord. We still serve him. Yes. Our liege lord, still sleeping oddly enough. Ivan suddenly wakes up, awake and aware. He doesn't move. Uh, not sleeping oddly enough. Your majesty. Your majesty. They wait for Ivan to respond. He just stares. Your majesty. Ivanushka. She touches his leg. Don't! Your grace. Ivan Antonovich. Our head hurts. Mm, an unfortunate side effect of drinking vodka, your majesty. <laughs> what else, sire? She touches his arm. Don't touch me! I don't want to be touched. Leave me alone. Get out of my head. If only that were possible, my prince. We have decided. He is our favorite. We want him. Sire. Your grace. We shall have him. The guard? Your majesty, surely not. He hurt you. He didn't hurt us. He touched us. He touched us. He held us. And hurt us, but... Then it didn't hurt. And I want him. Oh, my child. We want him. Avenushka. We want him! We want him! We want him! Mm. Dear heart majesty, if, if he brings you joy, take him. You are the sovereign. Is, is he not already ours? Your majesty, you are the Tsar of all the Russians. 
Yes. Yes, we are, aren't we? We shall take him. He is our favorite. Yes, sire. He is your favorite, sire. Do you know what that is, your grace? A favorite? Whatever it is, everyone has one but me. And I want one. Now I'm tired and have a lot to do. Let me sleep. Go away. Let me sleep. Your, your majesty. majesty. Elizabeth and Alexis solemnly resume their seats. After a moment, Ivan sleeps. The lights fade slowly to black. The lights come up on Ivan, alone on the bed, masturbating once again. Blossom abruptly enters, walks across the cell, and slaps the boy's hand out of his pants. We've got to cut off your hands if you don't stop it. Oh, sir, p p please, sir. Uh, no, no, I'll stop. I'll, I'll stop. No, you won't. That's what makes it endurable. No, p please, no, please, no, no, no. Check in, check in, where are you, check in? Sorry, sir. Coming, sir. I... The check in runs in the open door, snaps to attention, and salutes. He is anxious and distant. I overslept. <laughs> A night off is a good thing. Keeps one sane. Too much vodka, Captain. Ah, that's the point, isn't it? Until you go blind. His Majesty would like that, wouldn't you, boy? Watching check and go blind, wouldn't you? I, I don't know. No, no, please. N no. Idiot! Well, later not. You must do what you must do. I will not suffer criticism, check -in. Report to me before afternoon roll call. Flossif exits. Check and stares at the door. He's obviously nervous, but tries to conceal it. What is roll call? They make sure you're still here, then they tell you what they do for the rest of the day. Your life sounds like ours. Are you free? We are all enslaved. Does it hurt? Always. You, you, you hurt us last night. I know. Did you want to hurt us? Yes. Why? I... I don't know. We forgive you. Sire? It hurt. Then... It stopped. And I felt you touch me. Your Majesty. And we forgive you. Your Majesty. Touch us again. What? Touch us again. Fire, that is dangerous. Captain Blazes will hang me if I blink and... God, I, I hate him. He is wrong. Christ, he is so wrong. Check and falls to the floor in front of Ivan and goes down on his knee. You are the Tsar. Crowned alive. Worshipped by the church. I looked in your eyes and God spoke to me. I know what's been done to you and how we'll burn for it. The captain calls you Luca, does he not? I give a name, sire. Well, when he's angry, he screams it at me. Luca, friend, we would have you do it again. Oh, God. Ivan, your majesty, I can't. I, I... Check in! Do it again! I'll be back when I can, my lord. I'll... I'll... Be back. He bows his way out the door. We must now! Ah, yes. We must keep those favorites in check. No, no, no! I want him now. Now may be an opportune, sire. You may have to adapt your needs according to circumstances. 
You are my cousin's favorite. Count Alexis Romanovsky, at your service. Let's just see. Her favorite what? <laughs> Her favorite companion. Like the German ambassador? You are well informed, Your Grace. Of course, we are not a moron, cousin. No, leave us. Go away. We need to think. Ivan lays back, stuffs his hands in his pants, and drifts away. Thinking is good. Mm, I'm sure he's thinking more clearly than he was. Not about horses, we hope. <laughs> the lights dim to half, pause briefly, then fade to black. As the lights come up, it's late afternoon. Blasov is watching Ivan sleep as Chekin enters. He looks almost royal. Is he not? What if he is? Until he's gone, I can't live at court. He is nothing. Shoot him, for God's sakes! With all due respect, sir, I... I've come to think he may be... something. What if he is? Barely exists. I... I... I think he may be the Tsar. What if he is, Lieutenant? The order that keeps us here is succinct. The prisoner shall not be allowed to fall alive into the hands of rescuers. A declarative sentence. What you think is not a consideration. May it be in God's hands, Captain. God deserted him long ago. Since then, he's an illusion. The world knows of his tragedy. Owning that world and helplessly watching it swirl down the drain. It is unspeakably cruel. Certainly. And then you die. But, check it, you are a philosopher after all. Like the best soldiers. I'm a realist, sir. I deal with life and death. As we all do, eventually. But, not quite yet. Did I tell you Father Arsene will be leaving Rostov? Ah, sea voyage, perhaps? To a cell in the Baltic. The fortress of Reval. 16,000 peasants, and he has been erased. No one at Reval knows who he is, and no one there speaks Russian. Dare I ask? <laughs> he mentioned the unmentionable in front of Catherine while screaming at the Holy Synod. Then he was degraded and stripped. It happened in very uh, short order. He hasn't been seen since. Politics are abhorrent, Captain. Wars are safer. Even if he is the real thing, Lieutenant. Even if you think you're right. Even if you know you're right. Do not get too close. Guarding a prisoner is dangerous in more ways than you know. Lots of exits. Chekin nervously faces the door without turning or speaking. Suddenly, Ivan sits up. He hasn't been asleep. Chekin is thoroughly confused. Your Majesty. You serve us, do you not? Chekin turns, sees Ivan sitting on the bed, and goes down on his knee. Sire, I'm at your service. <laughs> of course you are. You are our favorite. Count, check in. Your Majesty, I, I am not a count. All favorites are counts. Count Razumovsky belongs to my cousin. The Colonel of the Prebrzezinski Guard? That would be my son, Kiro. His father. We are quite sure. Ivan spills onto the floor on his knees, facing check in. So, you are our favorite, Count. Your Grace? Call me Ivan. As the scene progresses, they become more and more like two boys playing a game. Your Majesty. Call us Ivan, Count. Your Grace? I... 
by them? <laughs> yes, yes, we are Ivan, and you are Luca, my favorite Luca. <laughs> Do you know what that is, uh, Ivan? A favorite? It means companion. It does? Yes. Like the German ambassador. <laughs> I don't know the German ambassador. He is not here. No, he's not. Suddenly Ivan laughs, reaches out, and starts tickling Chicken wherever he can reach, <laughs> and gets to wrestle for a moment as Chicken resists. Then they roll around on the floor with Ivan coming out on top and Chicken laughing. <laughs> Do you like that? Do you? The man who made pretty sounds did that with me. Yes. Yes, Your Majesty, it is very pleasant. No! 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 Ivan! We are called Ivan! Taken aback, Chicken stands and offers his hand to Ivan, pulling him up during the following. He seems to know what he wants. Not what one might have hoped. More a necessary compromise. Ivan turns, sits at the head of the bed, and holds out his hand. Without a word, Chicken again drops to his knees and kisses this. He is innocent, Count. Your licentious thoughts are inappropriate. He is a young man, my dear. Appropriate does not apply. You will call us Ivan. Yes, Ivan. Yes, when we are alone. I do not want to die. The captain is not nice. Sometimes, but he's a lion when it comes to orders, and this... This we have been ordered not to do. What are orders? Things I must obey. If not, I will be hurt. <laughs> you will not be hurt? You are our favorite. If you are hurt, we will have the captain whipped. An interesting thought. But Ivan, you don't understand. I fear for my life. Are we not friends? Not if I'm dead. Dead. Yes, I remember that. So we do not want dead for our friends. Not unless it's necessary. Sire, I hurt you. I... we... we were drunk. I gave you vodka. Wrong. So wrong. Men are dogs. They will stick to anything. None like women who throw inconvenient children into prison. Everything hurts. Always. Then you did something... else. A kiss, Ivan. It is called a kiss. After that, it didn't hurt. I kissed you on the forehead. Is that something free people do? Yes, dear Ivan, yes. Many people do it. Then I will have you do it to me again. Ah, oh, your grace. Dearest Ivan, I don't know what to say. Say nothing. Kiss us again, Count. It does not hurt. After a brief pause, during which Chekin studies Ivan intently, he takes Ivan into his arms and they kiss. Again. Do it again. Kiss me again. They grapple, then fall into the bed. Their lovemaking is gentle and passionate, centering on soft kissing and laughter. A romantic interlude for a young man who has been alone all his life. The lights dim, old, then slowly fade to black. As the lights come up, Vlasov enters. Ivan is alone and asleep. Vlasov is more than a little drunk, but in a playful mood. He looks around, sees a small pitcher full of water. He picks it up and dumps the water on Ivan, who wakes up choking and spitting. Vlasov laughs as he sits at the head of the bed and points to his boots. Oh, wait, <laughs> oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Clean your boots, mm, sir. Ivan scrambles to his position on the floor and attacks Vlasov's boot. Faster, mm. idiot. Now, not tomorrow. Mm. What are you good for, anyway? At least you're learning a trade. Russia's boots are always dirty. Ivan speaks softly as he works. I am the sovereign. Stunned, Vlasov leans forward and grabs Ivan by the shirt. What did you say? Ivan looks directly at Vlasov and speaks clearly. We are the Sovereign, Captain. They freeze, staring at one another. 
After a moment, Vlazov loosens his hold on Ivan's shirt and shoves him away as he leans back. Ivan holds his position. How dare you? Our mother was Grand Duchess Anna Leopoldovna, our father Prince Antony Ulrich of brunswick Lutenburg. We are not a moron. Majesty. Ivan turns back to the boot. You look like our father. He was commander-in-chief when I joined the army. Was he... Nice. You'd know that better than I. I was just an adjutant then, and he was commander for a very short time. I... I... Didn't see him much. Nobody did. Including your mother. She never saw him at all. Ivan stops polishing the boot and looks up. Did you... see me? Did I say you could stop? Lots of moves to slap Ivan, then stops himself. I'm sorry, uh... Sir, did you see me? Yes, sir. I surely did. D did I look nice? I saw you at your coronation. What 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 is a cor coronation? A uh, ceremony where one is declared emperor. They put a, b b b b a big thing on my head. Yes. D did I look nice? Lossick fumbles in his pocket and pulls out a large gold coin. Uh, here. This was struck when you were crowned. It shows how you looked. I look nice, but small. <laughs> the icons they sent to the churches were bigger, but not, not much. I don't remember being emperor. What is Emperor? Your Majesty, Emperor is the same as Sovereign or Tsar. It's, it's, it's... Suddenly realizing where this is heading, Vlazov explodes and rises. His attack is loud but not physical. This time, however, Ivan does not cringe and stutter. He remains silent and detached, which infuriates Vlazov even more. You are not the Emperor, moron. You lie. You are nothing. You are prisoner number one in Her Majesty's Schlüsselberg Fortress. Liar. Liar. Liar! You will never see the light of day. You are nothing. You are not the Tsar! Check and enters. Stunned by the violence, he is still cautious. Sir? Sir? What did I... What's happening? Has... He... He will not admit what he is. Idiot! Too stupid to remember anything. I'm sorry, Captain. I should have been here to take care of this little swine. Then do take care of the little swine, Lieutenant. Beat him until he stops lying. I have to deal with Mirovich. Sir? The idiot lost the cards last night. When he couldn't pay, he got maudlin and said some stupid things. Is he a danger? He's an aristocrat, but has no money and his attempts to deal with that are pathetic and misguided. Not that it matters. He's under surveillance, and this has nothing to do with him. I meant to check in. Whip the little son of a bitch until he knows his place. Lots of exits. Check crosses and locks the door as he hisses at the exiting Blossom. He knows his place. He's Ivan the Sixth. Check and turns, crosses quickly to Ivan. My God. He is the Tsar. Carefully, Shekin lifts Ivan onto the bed. As he sits, the shades turn out of the wall. Ivan, I said again and again, do not speak with the captain. Yes, sir. No, sir. Nothing else. He looks like our father. Some said Anthony Ulrich wasn't his father. Which hardly matters if your grandfather was Ivan the Fifth. Lazov is not your father, Ivan. He says he saw me. Why do we need men at all, Count? Because we tell you you do, my love, and you believe us. Yes, he did. Where? Before Riga. He has a picture. 
What kind of picture? You should be kept in caves and bred like cattle. Yeah, cave or palace, my dear. Even breeding becomes tedious. It's pretty, round and shiny, but little. I've seen it. A coin struck your coronation. Yes, he told us that. A hypocrite. I'm so sorry I wasn't here sooner. Who is Mirovich? He's no one. He needs money. Will he clean the captain's boots? <laughs> He's a lieutenant in the army, like me. Poor Ukrainian. Angry and stupid, he thinks... They roll around on the bed, becoming passionate. I don't know what he thinks. After a moment, Ivan pulls back, panting as he looks into Chekhov's eyes. Do it again, Count. Laughing, Chekhov reaches into Ivan's pants. Ivan giggles and removes his hand. <laughs> no, no, not that. The other thing, you know, the first thing. Dear heart, Ivan. Some things never change. I don't want to hurt you again. It all hurts. What does it matter? Please, please, please. Why does he want these dreadful things? What else does he know to want? Ivan, your majesty. Sitting up abruptly, Ivan beats Chekhov on the chest with his fist. Do it! Do it! Do it! They grapple for a moment, pause as they study one another, then Ivan pulls his right arm loose and slaps Chekhov hard across the face. Do it! Chekhov grabs Ivan's shoulder, shakes him hard, then pushes him backward. They wrestle passionately, finally stopping with Chekhov on top. After a short pause, Chekhov lowers his head and kisses Ivan tenderly. They freeze as the stage goes dark. As an alarm sounds throughout the prison, the lights come up full. Still on the bed, Chekhov sits up abruptly. He desperately pulls himself together as Ivan reaches out and pulls him back. I have to go. Please. Please, I have to go. You always have to go. Suddenly there's banging on the door. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Check it! Fix this damn door, you're going back to the ranks. I need it. Just lay there, don't move. Sorry, sir. Coming, sir. When I got here, it was fine. Ah, Lieutenant. When did you get here? I have a watch, Captain. I came when the alarm sounded. Yes, well, well done then, I suppose. Why is he still asleep? Sir, the alarm? It's the first time I've heard it since I was ordered here. Christ, Lieutenant. That imbecile Mirovich, he thinks he can do it. Sir? Lazov kicks Ivan with his right foot. <laughs> Wake up, moron. This concerns you. You should hear it. Oh, yes, sir, please, sir. Sorry, sir. Mirovich is saying out loud that prisoner number one is the baby Tsar and should be restored. Dear God. Now, so far, he's confined his stupidity to the barracks. He wouldn't dare say it in the mess. The rumors are right, sir. Don't some of the other officers... <laughs> he owes us all money. Oh. An impoverished aristocrat is like tits on a board. No sympathy, no takers. As far as we know, his only follower is one Apollon Ushakov, who is nobody. Actually, an orderly. I think. His family's been trying to restore itself since taking the wrong side in 1708. He's been taught nothing else, so he prays and gambles. Too many of you fall like that. Life of the third son is an easy captain. I don't believe I've had a problem with either of those. <sighs> those. But you're an excellent drinker, Chekin. And you're not exactly a saint. You and Mirovich have that in common. Excellent drinkers. Sir, the alarm? Yes, well, Mirovich is missing. He usually attends evening mass to beg God to give his money back. You hear that, Nitwit? He thinks you can do that. If he restores you, you'll pay his debts. Is that right, Your Majesty? You're going to pay his debts. Captain, the alarm? Yes, yes, well, uh, Mirovich can't be found, and there are weapons missing. The Commandant, sure, it's nothing, but I can't take a chance. We can't take a chance. Come with me. The sooner we find this Cretan, the sooner we can drink. Lossif exits, followed by Chekin, who turns back at the door. He comes to attention and bows deeply. Courage, Pemba. I won't let him hurt you. 
Shekin backs out of the room and pulls the door closed behind him. Ivan rises, staggers to the door, and falls against it. Count, Count! Don't go away, please. Don't go away. You all go away. As courtly music plays, the shades move out of the wall. Alexis crosses to the foot of the bed and moves a box to center stage. He picks up a blanket, spreads it with a flourish over the box, and backs away in a low bow. Elizabeth guides Ivan gently to this improvised throne. As he turns and sits, she backs away into curtsy. The shades raise their arms, move together, and dance. Ivan is delighted. He claps his hands and laughs. Ivan the Sixth reigns, if only for a moment. Up upon your majesty. Something French, I think. Your mother's favorite dance. Count Lenaire introduced it at court. Was he not her favorite? It's a confusing concept, your majesty. Suffice to say, Anna Leopoldovna liked them both. A lot. <laughs> we like them both a lot. Maybe not quite as much as your mother did. <laughs> music is universal, Count. It's not music I'm speaking of, my love. <laughs> All is illusion. So why not this one? Lieutenant Chekin was a surprise. A welcome surprise, surely. A final gift from the Almighty, perhaps. A paltry token, consider. Let us count check and please you, sire. He is our favorite. He would like this. That would be his duty, sire. He is also our friend. He will not let us be hurt. A true friend, then. My only friend. As the music grows louder, sounds of conflict can be heard from outside the cell. Apparently uneasy, the shades dance a bit more anxiously. Regardless, the music and dancing still incite Ivan. Me! 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 Let us dance, we want to dance. Dancing is good, sire. It will teach you elegance and grace. Alexis reaches out to Ivan to laugh as he positions himself between the shades. They part, take his hands, and the three dance. Ivan stumbles a lot, but he enjoys himself, and there's a great deal of laughing. Suddenly gunshots are heard. Everyone is startled. The music <laughs> stops abruptly as the shades genuflect and back away from Ivan. I fear our conversation is coming to an end. As all things must. Confused and frightened, Ivan staggers backwards and falls into his throne. Outside the cell, chaos reigns. Merovage's attempt to free Ivan is clearly underway. The door opens. Check and enters. Slams the door and crosses to Ivan. He drops to his knee. Your Majesty, dearest, Mirovich is coming. We cannot pay his debts. No, no, of course not. Why would you think that? The c c captain said... The captain is an idiot. So, so many idiots. Is that like a count? Your, your Majesty, Mirovich is coming to set you free. Then maybe we, we will pay his debts. Forget Mirovich's debts, he will be stopped. You you don't understand. Shekin crosses himself, grabs Ivan's hand, and kisses it tenderly. The shades bow and hold their positions as blobs of persons to the room. Grasps what's going on and explodes. He slams the door and drops the bar as the angry crowd outside screams and demands entry. Well, you're going to hang, Shekin. He is the Tsar, Captain, absolutely beyond doubt. His Imperial Majesty. We are the sovereign of Russia? The dead sovereign of Russia. Mirovich has detained the governor. He and his radical friends are on their way. For what? Set you free, your majesty. To set us all free. Isn't, isn't that a good, good thing? Oh God, no. Why isn't it a good thing? Shekin rises and steps in front of Ivan. Blazem moves to face him, his back to the audience. Ivan rises and cowers behind Shekin. Captain, please. No. 
You will stop this! We will have your head! Plaza snaps to attention. Your Imperial Majesty, Ivan VI, Tsar of Russia, Ward of the Holy Senate, by direct order of Catherine II, you cannot be set free without a written permission. Since no such permission has been received, and since an attempt to set you free is in progress, it is ordered that you be executed in a merciful and timely manner. Dropping his salute, Glazov steps back, looks at Chekhov, and barks an order. Lieutenant, do your duty. Captain Vlas, sir, no. Please, you can't do this. I'm not going to do it, Lieutenant. You are. Kill him. Sir. I'll have your head. Do your duty or I'll kill you both. Kill him. I, I can't. Oh, oh, God, I can't. You can, Lieutenant. You can. By order of Her Imperial Majesty, Catherine II. Kill him. Second freezes, still directly in front of Ivan. Suddenly he moves two steps away, leaving Ivan naked and trembling. Pulls a knife out of his belt with his left hand and whirls around. He snaps to attention and salutes. He is crying. Ivan, my sweet friend, no one will ever hurt you again. In one sweeping motion, Check and slits Ivan's throat. He steps back, drops his knife, and comes to rigid attention as the boy grabs his neck. Standing in surprise, Ivan looks at Chekin and smiles as blood pours through his fingers and down his body. You think we will go home now, Count? It will be nice to go home. Ivan coughs and pulls lifeless to the floor as the shades vanish. God bless Ivan the Sixth. God bless the Tsar. God bless Ivan. Weeping, Chekin drops to the floor and takes Ivan in his arms. Oh, Ivanushka. Oh, my love. My dear, sweet love. Lazar studies them for a moment, then looks straight at the audience. It cannot be denied. Lost is truth. For some men, it is the only truth they will ever know. Moved in spite of himself, Lazar snaps to attention, clicks his heels, salutes with his sword, and cries out with great heart. God bless Ivan the Sixth. God bless his Imperial Majesty, sovereign and autocrat of all the Russias. God bless the Tsar. God bless Ivan. The screen freezes as the play goes dark.